Welcome to the uh, preview of day four here in the Nippon Budokan, day four of the judo here at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Today it's the women under 63 kilograms and the men under 81 kilograms and uh, well two absolutely brilliant categories for sure. Um, the 63, well, Agbeg Nanou from France, five times already she was the world champion and in Rio she won the silver medal, lost against Tristenjak in the final. She's been waiting for five years now for this day. There's one medal that she doesn't have and that's the gold medal at the Olympics and today she's the absolutely top favorite. But there are a few other really strong competitors in this category. Let's see uh, who will be she will uh, she will be facing today. One of the most decorated judoka in history resides at under 63 kilograms. Clarice Agbegnanu's fabled career took off in Chelyabinsk in 2014 as she defeated her great friend and defending world champion Yadin Gerby in the final to claim her first world title. But her path to greatness would be blocked by a different challenger one year later, as current world number two Tina Terstignac found an answer to the Frenchwoman's power, overcoming her in the 2015 world final. Her tactical guile and determination winning the day and the world championship. One year later in the Olympic final, Terstenyak found a way once again, adding Olympic gold to her world title. But in 2017, Agbegnanu bounced back, edging a tactical encounter to reclaim the world champion's red back patch. And two titles became three in Baku in 2018, but this time against a new challenger, Japan's world number three, Tashiro, Tashiro is one of the most talented of the current crop of Japanese competitors. And she proved why, as she took out Terstenyak at the semi-final stage, in front of her die-hard Japanese fans. But, as the final entered golden score, Agbegnanu struck, with incredible commitment and drive, the hallmark of her judo. Tashiro wouldn't give up. Twelve months later, on her home soil, she reached the final once again for another face-off against her friend and rival, Agbegnanu. Tashiro pushed the Frenchwoman to a place she'd never been before. And over seven minutes into golden score, Tashiro made a last-ditch effort. But Agbegnanu responded emphatically. Both athletes overcome with emotion. An incredible display of judo values at the end of an epic. Agbeg Nanu, now a four-time world champion. Then, just one month ago, Agbeg Nanu surprised everyone by deciding to go for a fifth world title in Budapest. She looked cool, calm and collected. And with her two main rivals, Terstenyak and Tashiro, both at home preparing for the games, Agbeg Nanu dominated the category racing to the final and blasting her way into the history books yet again. Five world titles and the ultimate statement of intent for Tokyo. Three of Pan America's best are in hot pursuit, however. Canada's Boshamin Pinard took gold in Tbilisi this year and attacks from all angles with great variety. Brazil's reigning Pan American champion Ketlin Quadros is still mixing it with the best after over 12 years on tour. Cuba's Del Toro Carvajal poses a huge threat with her incredible throwing ability. And from Europe, Germany's Martina Tridos, who took her first world medal two years ago in Tokyo. She was joined on the podium by Jule Fransen, the Dutch woman now a two-time world medalist. The big three of the category are ready and waiting. But surely, nothing can stop Agbegnanu avenging her Rio defeat and finally taking that elusive Olympic title. So the question is, will Agbeg Nanu win her gold medal today? The pressure, it will be so high for sure. And it will not be an easy day for her. Let's see the, uh, uh, the draw. 
if you look at the draw, of course, she's in the left uh, top uh, uh, side because uh, she's the highest ranked. Uh, but there are a few really good uh, fighters also on this side. Uh, Bojemin Pinar, for example, from Canada. Uh, Krisikova. Um, I look at uh, Jules France. She, she will be facing uh, Obradovic first fight. Obradovic, she won the world bronze medal in 2021. Jules France also a medalist at world championships. Um, so, uh, Gilly Sharir, also from Israel. There are a few really good fighters, so it won't be an easy uh, way to the finals for Agbek Nanu. But uh, the hardest fights for her, well, the hardest opponents, they're on the other side. Tristenjak, of course. She's the reigning Olympic champion. She was the one that, who beat uh, Agbek Nanu in Rio in the final. Um, Del Toro Carvajal, I have to mention her, from Cuba. Davidova from Russia. She won the silver at the Europeans in 2021. And then, of course, for Japan, Tashiro. Well, Tashiro, she is uh, the Japanese fighter that won against Agbek Nanu once. They fought each other 10 times. It's 9 to 1. But we all know this final in 2019 at the World Championships. It lasted uh, about seven minutes into golden score. And then it was Agbek Nanu who won her fifth uh, or her fourth title at that moment. Now she already has five titles. But uh, Tashiro knows how it feels to win against Agbek Nanu. Will that be the final? We will see it later on. Uh, well, it's uh, quite something else in the 81 kilogram category for men, because the amount of uh, athletes that can win a medal in this category is enormous, unbelievable. I think the strongest category of the whole uh, Olympics for the men for sure is the 81. I just wrote uh, out a, a, a few names. It's of course Matthias Kasse from Belgium. He's the world champion. Uh, he was fighting Grigalashvili from Georgia in the final. But we have Nagase, we have De Witt, Molai, Muki. There's so many good fighters. Let's see who are the favorites. In judo, the sign of the world champion is the red back patch. Belgium's Matthias Casse now holds that honor at under 81 kilograms. At the World Championships in Tokyo two years ago, he powered his way to the gold medal contest with a workmanlike performance. In the final, he faced Israeli talisman Sagi Muki, with both men looking to make history by becoming the first man from their country to become a world champion. It was Muki who rose to the occasion with a stellar performance, throwing Kasse for two wazaris, making him Israel's first ever male world champion a title which has eluded Muki for far too long. Fast forward two years to Budapest. Kasse once again was on blistering form and once again reached the final. History beckoned, but this time with Muki absent. It was a Georgian, the formidable Tato Grigalashvili standing in his way. Grigalashvili is one of the most exciting players in world judo. Left, right, forwards, Backwards, he can do it all. He is electrifying, as Dutchman Frank de Witt found out in the semi-final in Budapest. But Kasse was not to be denied again, taking the contest into golden score before striking the decisive blow. Ippon, the world title, and the Olympics seemingly at his mercy. Or maybe not. Turkey's Al Bayrak is a man Kasse has never beaten in two attempts and is a dangerous thrower who the Belgian could face in the semi-final. Frank de Witt went on to take world bronze after his defeat to Grigalashvili and will take confidence from his 2-0 winning record over Kasse. Canada's Antoine Valois-Fortier has 10 years of experience and already has one Olympic and three world medals. Is it time for one more? Sharafidin Boltaboyev carries Uzbekistan's hopes he is the scorer of the fastest Ippon on record, and his explosive counter-attacking ability makes him a real danger. Japan's Nagase is a former world champion and has recently shown glimpses of his best. 
On home soil, he will carry a genuine threat. And now representing Mongolia, Saeed Molai is the charismatic 2018 world champion who will believe it's his time to stand atop the Olympic podium. But two years on from the Tokyo World Championships, could it once again be Muki versus Kase at the Nippon Budokan in the final, fighting for the ultimate prize? Well, it's just too much, you know. I will sit from the first to the last fight today for sure to watch the 81 kilogram category because what an amazing amount of really great fighters. Let's see the draw. Uh, of course, Matthias Kasse, silver medalist against Muki in the, in the World Championships in 2019 and now last uh, two months ago, he was the new world champion. First world champion for a Belgium, male uh, world champion. Um, let's see the draw a little bit closer, please. Um, it's Matthias Kasse. Uh, on the left side, Khubetsov from the Russian Olympic Committee. And uh, I want to stress out Voila Fortier from Canada. The last few years, maybe he was not fighting that well, but if there's somebody who can make a real good, uh, uh, who can be really good in shape at an Olympics, then it's this Canadian. So watch out for him for sure. So that will be a very interesting block. But the hardest block, in my opinion, is uh, on the left corner. Because there we have, like in one quart, we have four fighters that can win a medal at the uh, Olympics, for sure. It's Nagase from Japan fighting his first fight against Albayrak. Albayrak, the European champion from 2021, who actually beat Kasse from Belgium in the final at the European. So Albayrak, also a big chance. And then in that same block, also Parlati from Italy, one of the uh, best fighters from the, the last few months. He won a lot of medals, world champion juniors. So from this block, there only will be one fighter in the quarterfinal. So this will be an amazing block. Down we go to Frank de Witt, the bronze medalist at the World Championships 2021. Always fun to watch him. He always gives everything, all the energy inside. So let's see if he can continue doing what he uh, did at the World Championship, winning a medal at the Olympics. Uh, then he has to face, of course, um, uh, really down, it's uh, Dominic Ressel from Germany. Did not see him uh, f uh, fighting really well the last few months, but the Germans, they know how to prepare at the Olympics. On the other side, we have Sagi Muki, Muki, the 2019 world champion. Uh, after this win in 2019, I did not see Muki at the same uh, uh, way that, that, that w he had when he was the world champion. But let's see how he prepared for this Olympics. Egutitze from Portugal, also on this side, and of course from Uzbekistan, Bolta Boyev. Such a strong fighter. Ivanov from, uh, Bulgari from Bulgaria. Um, and then in the lower half, we have the man to watch for sure, Grigalashvili. He thought he would be the new world champion, but it was Matthias Kasse who beat him in the final. But this man is still waiting for his first big gold medal. Already won a European championship, but not a world championships. And uh, he's uh, uh, in, on his uh, first Olympic uh, uh, tournament. And uh, I know for sure he will be in good shape. Um, then he has to face Said Molai. Of course, Molai, the 2018 world champion, and then uh, uh, a lot of uh, good, uh, strong fighters, for example, Lee from Korea, uh, Hamza from uh, Kazakhstan. So it will be an amazing day today. And well, sometimes you have like a big favorite, like yesterday, Ono was the big favorite. Today, I can't ev even say who, who, who will win because there are so many good fighters today. It will be amazing to watch the 81 kilogram category and who will be in the best shape, who will uh, walk out of the Budokan, the Nippon Budokan, uh, this uh, evening with the gold medal, with the silver and with the two bronzes. We will see it later on. You will see the link. I know it's quite difficult uh, sometimes to see it. 
of course, when we have our own uh, uh, world championships or the Grand Slams, the Grand Prix, it's the IGF who provides all the judo. Now it's the, uh, from the IOC. So you have to check in your own country where you can see the judo because uh, it's absolutely worth it. We will see if Agbek Nanou will win her gold medal for France and we will see who, who is going to be the gold medalist in the 81 kilogram category of all these absolutely top uh, athletes. Let's see today.